Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the Daily Debate, and I am honored uh, to be having with me over the program for tonight uh, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Halim, the political analyst. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to know your opinion regarding the Palestinian cause and the escalation that uh, are ongoing nowadays in Gaza, and of course, the support being given by Egypt and the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi to our Palestinian brothers and sisters there now. Right. Uh, first, let me express my deep condolences, actually, and express uh, there and then my deep sense of sadness, actually, for the bereaved ones and, uh, you know, of those very much exceptional fighters and heroes and heroines, actually, that for some reason or another, actually, would express and underline uh, a very rare generation of people who lived and died in love, for love and by love for their own native soil, for their own native land, actually. Yes. Um, well, um, during the course of uh, the previous week, as we all know, actually, there is a great deal of escalation for the sort of the onslaught that had been directed and uh, dedicated on the part of uh, Hamas uh, campaign and, and group, actually, towards, uh, you know, I mean, Israel, a sort of a thing that came after uh, long years of enmity, of hatred, of... Uh, um, massacre deaths of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, atrocities, of scandalous affairs, of assassination, of, uh, you know, ferociousness, actually, in almost all conceivable respects on the part of the Israeli side. So, I mean, for some reason or another, we can say that uh, the sort of the rate that had been directed and initiated on the part of Hamas during the course of the last Saturday, actually, was justifiable on almost all concepts, actually. But what seems to be quite bizarre and exceptional, the sort of the ferocious retaliation on the part of the Israeli army, the bombardment and the sort of uh, the demolition of the lands and the suffocation of the youngsters, actually, of the elderly people, of the elderly figures, actually, of women, of boys, of girls, of innocent, actually, of very much victimized figures, very much blameless, actually, having nothing to do with Hamas or even with the process of fighting. They turned out to be very much peaceful citizens, actually living in their own residences, actually practicing their own daily routine and their own daily activities, actually, only to find these, you know, mass massacre dust and these, you know, atrocities and this bombardment, actually, directed and demolishing as much as, um, you know, suffocating all their own residences, actually, for, you know, no reason, actually, just for the fact that those people, the Jewish people, actually, are looking for, you know, I mean, those um, Hamas figures. Uh, but in the meantime, this is not one way uh, of retaliating the sort of the attack or the raid. Because against the uh, crimin criminalization, against the international law, against almost all the human and humanitarian conceivable respects, and this is, if to be compared actually with one single individual attitude on the part of the Hamas figures, uh, I think a couple of days, one of them actually was, you know, cladding one of the Jewish girls in, in cloths actually, side by side with her own little child, and setting her free just for humanitarian reasons, a sort yes. of a thing that seems to be quite exceptional and very much justifiable, actually. Whereas the other side actually is almost uh, practicing all the terrorist actions and the suffocation and the mass massacre deaths, and in the meantime, putting an end with a great deal of ferociousness, actually, for almost all these victims. Um, to our towards seeming, the situation seems to be quite bizarre, heartbreaking adventure on the part of the Jewish troop, unfortunately assisted and fortified by the American administration for a couple of days. Uh, you know, I mean, um, an uh, aircraft carrier uh, entitled U.S. Uh, Gerald Ford did arrive to the coastal line of uh, the Mediterranean Sea, very much facing uh, the Palestinian territorial land. Um, Varocious one indeed, armed and fortified with almost all the ammunition and all the artilleries and the, uh, you know, I mean, rockets and uh, all the illegal, uh, you know, ammunition actually to be practiced. And in the meantime, Yesterday also arrived a newly uh, uh, one, another newly uh, aircraft uh, entitled, uh, you know, Eisenhower, U.S. Eisenhower, just by way of, you know, I mean, circulating and maximizing the atmosphere of violence for almost citizens that have nothing to do actually with their own daily lives. Even the fishermen are very much deprived of their own simple right to bring, uh, you know, I mean, a sense of faith, a certain you know, I mean, meal actually for those dying figures and dying uh, people and animals uh, actually. 
um, you know, I mean, it's a one way of uh, putting an end for Gaza's life, uh, demolishing the infrastructure, very much fortifying by almost the American administration, as I've just said, justifying the causes and the ways and the means of the atrocities on the part of the Jewish troops, without the least uh, regards for those who are being very much demolished and suffocated into their own hands. You know, uh, the situation and the uh, portrayal of the scenes would seem to be hard to break in once indeed, I mean, uh, without the least regard. Perhaps, I mean, the only ray of hope and the only light of hope came to be regarded through the uh, intervention on the part of the Egyptian presidency, actually, um, asking the uh, international community to participate and to try to put an end for that scandal, so to speak, and in the meantime, pushing um, a helping hand as much as the humanitarian aid and the human aid, some medication, surgeons, uh, food, uh, in the meantime, through the crossings, through the uh, land, uh, you know, bridges. But unfortunately, actually, uh, you know, the bridge of uh, uh, Karma Salem, as much as, you know, the other uh, Rafah is being demolished from the side of Israel. Yes. But in the meantime, there is a negotiation uh, on the part of His Own Excellency, Mr. Naftah Sisi, today with his own meeting with Foreign Secretary Atom Blinken to put an end for all these things and very much, um, you know, representing the international community. One dimension which is, and one point of view that is, if the circle of danger is being very much besieging Palestinian territorial land, it would not only actually be focused on that, it would be maximized to entail actually, and to extend in such a way actually to maximize the terrorist tax actually that would reach to uh, other adjacent countries in the meantime. Because, I mean, as we all know that, uh, you know, I mean, Palestine is not just a mere uh, Arab territorial land. It's, it's a, strat a strategic depth, actually, for the Egyptian existence, for all the Arab existence, actually. It is a perpetual song of humanity throughout ages that never ends, actually. And Egypt uh, has had its own role, uh, humanitarian and very much charitable one indeed, aiding and helping them since uh, quite uh, more than 50 years, without a stoppage, actually. And I think that... During the course of the last week uh, and the festival of the uh, celebration of the graduation of the postgraduate students from yes. military colleges, actually, Mr. President of Tahsisi was very much insisting on two main dimensions, two main perpetual facts that should be considered not only on a local level but actually on the international community, which is that uh, the national Egyptian national security uh, is a red zone, is a red line. It's untouchable. It's quite uh, religious to a great extent. Very much strategic and in the meantime against all the projects and all the prospects of uh, uh, relocation on of the self-immigration of forcing uh, what you might call a repressed and suppressed immigration on the part of the Gaza citizens actually this is their own homeland perpetual yes. one indeed in much same way that uh, Ismail Haneya you know the uh, the um, you know uh, political uh, Hamas leader uh, the senior political Hamas leader in his own words yesterday insisting on the self same episode which is this is our own homeland our native is part and would never ever leave it on any conceivable respect no matter what would happen actually and um, so it goes side by side with our own egyptian presidency's point of view that um, egypt is very much in favor of helping them every now and again but uh, if you touch that sort of point actually uh, it would seem to be quite a better thousand times actually for them actually insist on living in there and dying in there uh, fighting for their own cause and case actually till the very end either martyrdom actually or victory Yes, uh, Doctor, this brings us to a very important uh, point, and you've mentioned that uh, the Egyptian security is a red line, and we will be going to the first uh, report of the daily debate for tonight, and it focuses on this meaning of the statements made by His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi today yeah. uh, after the meetings of uh, the National Security Council and with uh, the American Secretary of State Antony Blinken, where President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi mentioned that uh, securing Egypt is his responsibility amid the escalation in uh, Gaza. Of course, we'll be going to seeing uh, the first report of uh, the daily debate uh, for tonight, and we'll be coming uh, back once again to you, so stay tuned. President Fattah al-Sisi reaffirmed his commitment to safeguarding the country's national security amid Palestinian-Israeli war in Gaza Strip. 
stressing that Egypt is intensifying its efforts at all levels to hold the current military confrontations. The president stressed that safeguarding national security is top responsibility and there will be no compromise or complacency under any circumstances. President Sisi's remarks came during the Police Academy graduation ceremony for the class of 2023. During his speech, President Sisi warned that the current escalation between Israel and Palestinians could have implications that may affect security and stability of the region. Egypt, he noted, is intensifying its efforts at all levels to hold the current military confrontations, spare the blood of the Palestinian people, and protect civilians on both Palestinian and Israeli sides. Israel, which declared a state of war Saturday in response to a surprise attack by Hamas in the early hours of the day, has been launching airstrikes on Gaza since then, with tens of residential homes and buildings among structures hit without prior warning. President Sisi reiterated that a just and comprehensive peace based on the two-state solution is the path to achieving sustainable security for the Israeli people. He explained Egypt hopes for a resolution of the Palestinian cause through negotiations leading to a just peace and establishment of a Palestinian state. However, he stressed that Egypt will not allow the Palestinian cause to be liquidated at the expense of other parties. Over the past few days, President Sisi had several phone conversations and meetings with world leaders, including Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, Turkish President Erdogan, and the President of the UAE, Mohammed bin Zayed, to explore ways to stop violence escalation. Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the daily debate. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Halim, as we have seen over the past uh, report, uh, the statements made by His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Hassisi on Thursday uh, regarding the graduation of uh, several uh, military batches from the military colleges for 2023. Um, two important statements made were that we reject the displacement of uh, the people of Palestine or the people of Gaza in specific from the north to the south and of course consequently to the neighboring countries and there is no way the cause the Palestinian cause will be liquidated or disintegrated how do you see the, those two statements well uh, first um, concerning um, liquidation and disintegration actually or what you might call the uh, the agenda of the wasteland yes the um, land under of turmoil the land which is quite uh, devastated uh, to a greater extent that was the prospect of the israeli side that's why they insisted uh, every now and again and as it was to be reiteratively repeated on the part of benjamin netanyahu mm -hmm. for um, hamas uh, figures as much as the uh, civilians in there that they would have to leave their own homelands before yes. the demolition of the houses and their own establishments a fact that is to be denied and rejected on a large scale and had been assisted and confirmed by uh, uh, Ismail Hanaya, as I've just said, before the report, in much same way in advance, actually, a sort of a propagation and sort of insistence on the part of His Own Excellency, uh, Mr. President of Tahsisi, who did represent that sort of uh, fact uh, early before in advance, before Ismail Hanaya on the one hand, and before the uh, notification on the part of Benjamin Netanyahu on the other, uh, clear testimony to the fact that you are quite aware of the agenda of the uh, vicious uh, facts of the Israelis bad intentions and uh, um, very you know I mean uh, intentions of demolishing the land because as we all know that uh, the uh, it was uh, around uh, 2000 that the Gora Island that is uh, the Jewish uh, Mossad uh, leader uh, was propagating actually uh, a certain uh, new map of the road uh, based on uh, relocation and displacement of uh, Gaza citizens actually uh, to be abided within the northern part of Sinai uh, for about 720 kilometers actually yes. and return for uh, you know what you might call uh, a sense of autonomy and uh, self-determination or self-governing actually for the Gaza people uh, and in the meantime uh, extending uh, a sort of uh, a line that would uh, besiege uh, um, a man in Jordan uh, passing through Egypt and then ending in Tel Aviv 
a sort of effect that had been denied on the ground of its being, actually. We would never, ever actually be able to accept that sort of demolition for the infrastructure of the Palestinian land, nor even actually accept any sort of, uh, you know, salvation or false salvation, actually, that's based on the lives. And a dear price, which is the very much uh, dear land, actually, which is the Palestinian one. Uh, their own prospect was actually to change the whole land into something which is called the, uh, you know, a Nakab desert to be uh, given actually to the Egyptian presidency. If you go back actually to the uh, very beginning of the propagation of the sort of, you know, I mean, vicious situation on the part of uh, Igor Island, uh, we can uh, really remember the fact that it had been denied on the ground of its being by late uh, President Mohammed Hosni Barak, only to be endorsed and accepted during the late year of the Muslim Brotherhood reign by Morsi. Actually, it would sit and two can uh, select and reject the items actually to be discussed with uh, Ismail Haneya and uh, Khaled Mishal at the same time, accepting and endorsing that sort of, you know, I mean, act of buying yes. uh, a very peace part of the land only to be rejected on the ground of its being with his own advent to the presidential scene, that is Mr. President of Tahsisi, who denied almost all these false prospects and all these claims, actually, uh, right from the early start to the very end. And nowadays, they seem to be quite revitalizing that very much false hope again mm. for a second time, de nouveau, I would say, uh, but we are quite aware of all these intentions. That's why I think that uh, during the celebration of the graduation day, uh, His Own Excellency, Mr. Uh, President of the CC, did represent these two sole facts, actually. It was a sort of very much straightforward and direct message to be uh, directed and to be addressed, actually, for the Western world at large, mm -hmm. as much as to the American administration that would seem to be quite very much, um, you know, endorsing and very much helping the Israelis' existence within the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, Joe Biden, at one respect, did mention the fact that this is our own uh, strategic partner much the same way that Donald Trump a couple of years or about three years ago did say that uh, you know the sort of relationship that does exist between the Israeli side on the one hand and the American administration is such an inseparable one indeed without no ending actually yes. perpetual one mm -hmm. so it would give us a clear indication of the fact that no matter what sort of American administration would be you know previous one or present time or would be in the near future they would insist on the same fact which is Insisting the existence of Israel as a brig, as a zone actually within mm. the heart and the throat of the Arab nation. A fact that is denied, a fact that is being rejected. And in the meantime, directing all these messages for the wet community at large on the part of his own excellency to try to be uh, able to negotiate and to uh, follow the roads of negotiation. Uh, on a peaceful way, actually, rather than the atrocities and the mass massacre deaths and the loss of thousands and thousands and injured uh, people that are dying on a daily basis, actually, um, against the criminalization, against the, you know, the international law, against the, uh, the laws of the American uh, administration and world community at large. That's why, I mean, uh, it's, uh, you know, a clear indication on the part of his, the presidential authority to represent these two sole facts a sort of a thing that would put an end for any sort of interference because I've just said that at the very beginning of the episode that uh, Joe Biden is sending, you know, Eisenhower, the aircraft carrier, as much as Gerald uh, Ford, not only as a sort of direct message actually for the adjacent and the neighboring Arab countries, that is Egypt, uh, Syria, the Lebanon, Hamas, uh, you know, and all these uh, entities actually, but directed also for Egypt in the meantime representing one main fundamental fact that on no account we would be able actually to negotiate in favor of uh, selling just one piece inch of our own territorial land mm. nor even the northern part of sinai insisting every now and again on the existence of both hamas civilians and uh, citizens actually yes. on their own homeland helping them to decide for their own life to take their own actions and reaction to decide the way they would take uh, and the suit of the leader that they would be able to select in the meantime. Uh, this is the clear messages and very much straightforward that had been directed uh, during the course of the lapse of the previous week on the past of his own excellency, Mr. President of the ICC, actually. Yes, uh, doctor, we have seen uh, today as well uh, the meeting of his excellency, President Assisi, with uh, the National Security Council. Uh, another decision that was taken uh, following uh, this meeting was that uh, Egypt will be continuing the communication and, uh, of course, uh, the meddling 
uh, between <coughs> the Palestinians and the Israelis to be reaching de-escalation as well as calling for a regional summit. What does this say about the weight of Egypt regionally? Of course, as we did see as well, uh, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is here in Egypt to be meeting with uh, the Egyptian president for the same purpose of de-escalating the situation. Well, uh, the um, selection of Antony Blinken, uh, Egypt as his own forest station to negotiate with, and his own reference, actually, of his own existence with his own excellency, Mr. President of Tassis, is a clear indication for uh, uh, a fact that, you know, I mean, uh, the sole in inaugurator mm -hmm. and initiator, actually, of the peace process in the Middle East is his own excellency. And this is not quite new of its kind. We have had uh, previous experiences of negotiating of meddling into these affairs during, uh, you know, Gaza, the third, the fourth, and the fifth attack, we had been there actually yes. reconstructing, rehabilitating and reinitiating, uh, you know, the infrastructure that had been demolished in each single individual sort of slot mm -hmm. on the part of the Israeli troop. We had always been there. We would take the lead, would represent our own armed forces actually to safeguard the border lines as much as sending our own surgeons, our architectural uh, experiences as much as uh, vessels of, uh, you know, food of uh, medication to a greater extent. So, I mean, this is quite, you know, I mean, a, a normal step on the part of the Egyptian uh, Gemona, actually, mm. during the course of the last uh, uh, previous, uh, perhaps, 40 or 50 years. Mm. Uh, Until Blinken's uh, awareness of the deep interest, actually, of Mr. Uh, President of the Sisi and his own enthusiastic details and his own previous and massive experiences of dealing of all these harsh situations. Particularly, I mean, we have had, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, other examples of uh, bringing together Fatah and Hamas when they had been quite disputing with each other. We had been very yes. much successful, actually, in sending high-profile delegations to put an end for all these calamities and all these disputes and uh, put an end for the atmosphere of alienation and sense of isolation, actually, and to bring them together. But n nowadays, it seems to be quite a very much dire situation because mm. Egypt is playing the role of being uh, not a little tent, not a little camp. Uh, for almost all the Syrians and all the Sudanese people and the Yemeni figures mm. or the Libyan um, people, actually, the situation is a bit different insofar as all these previous nationalists that I did mention right now are very much, you know, I mean, living on an Egyptian territorial mm. land with the view of returning to their own native about soil at one time. Million. They have got, yeah, about m more than nine millions, actually, mm. of almost all these nationalities. But they have got uh, strategic leadership. They have got their own border lines. They have got the frontage and the edifice of their own homeland. Mm. Uh, they are uh, existing here for each, um, you know, I mean, perhaps for working, for studying, for doing their own domesticities, actually, and natural daily activities with the hope that they will be able to return to their own native land at one time. But concerning the Gaza people, actually, is very much serious. And so far as there is, as I've just mentioned, a Gora Island uh, project that had been uh, inaugurated and attempted to be uh, part of their own daily routine. But uh, what would make it a bit, uh, you know, I mean, uh, easy for our own armed forces that we are quite aware in advance. We are quite fortified for that sort of notion. We are quite aware of the alternative land and the sort of the process that they are planning actually to, as I've just said, uh, relocate or uh, force the, uh, the Hamas and uh, the Gaza uh, Strip people to return again actually and what would help us in our own situation is the sense of fortification and the sense of the fortitude and the sense of the insistence and extreme sense of patience on the part of the uh, Hamas people yes. to live and die in there, you know, I mean, representing an underlying and eternal episode actually of uh, chivalry, of uh, knighthood, mm. of uh, gallantry, and of being very much uh, indigenous citizens in the real sense mm. of the word their own insistence to live and die in there, coupled with our own uh, negotiations and our own peaceful, uh, you know, inaugurations of uh, finding an alternative way for uh, putting in for that sort of onslaught and that sort of mass massacre death uh, by uh, returning again to the two-state solution, the international uh, law, the international community, Oslo, in the meantime, all these things that would seem to be quite derelict, uh, that would seem to be quite uh, overlooked uh, during the previous years of negotiation, I think that now they would reach to a peak, to reach to, you know, I mean, the top uh, of negotiations inaugurated by his own excellence in there, 
as much as directing and uh, giving his own objectives and directives, actually, to Antony Blinken, actually, to put an end, if they would like, actually, mm. to uh, live peacefully in this uh, Mediterranean part of the world. Mm, yes, Doctor, heading uh, to the response of uh, the Arab League uh, towards uh, the United Nations and the second report of uh, the daily debate uh, for tonight, as the Arab League called uh, for the United Nations to be stopping the Israeli plan to be expelling uh, the Gazans uh, from the land uh, towards the neighboring countries or within Gaza itself as a term of uh, relocation. We'll be having more details in the upcoming report, so stay tuned. The Arab League sent an urgent letter to the United Nations calling for preventing an Israeli plan to expel people of Gaza amid ongoing military operations. Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abu Ghid sent the letter to Secretary General of the United Nations Antonio Guterres calling on him to use his political and moral way to prevent a new war crime that Israel plans to commit as part of its bloody campaign against Gaza Strip. This campaign includes demanding all residents of the northern Gaza Strip to immediately relocate to their house. The letter read, this new crime has exceeded all reasonable limits and will lead to immeasurable suffering for our Palestinian brothers and sisters in Gaza Strip. Moreover, the Israeli move represents a blatant violation of Article 49 of the Fourth Geneva Convention, which prohibits occupying force from forcibly transferring or deporting any persons protected under the occupation. Abu Ghid appealed to Guterres and the Security Council member states to condemn this insane Israeli endeavor to forcibly transfer the population and condemn it decisively and clearly. He called for working with all influential parties to hold implementation of this Israeli plan warning that such move would forever tarnish the international community's reputation. Separately, Jordan has warned against attempts of expelling Palestinians from Gaza to Egypt and exporting the current crisis to neighboring countries. Jordan added that all Arab countries have pledged collective action against any attempt to expel Palestinians from their homeland in an emergency meeting of foreign ministers on Wednesday. Egypt has also voiced rejection of potential attempts to force Palestinians to leave their lands towards Sinai, warning that this will mean a termination for the Palestinian cause. Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the daily debate. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Halim, of course, uh, we have seen today the meeting between uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi and the American Secretary of State. One of the statements uh, made uh, by the American Secretary of State is that we need uh, coordination and cooperation and joint action to be de escalating the situation in Gaza. On the other hand, President Sisi uh, said that uh, the Israeli response has gone from self defense to collective punishment towards about two million Palestinians. How do you see the importance of those two statements in this time? Right, so I've said that, um, you know, I mean, right so, right from the early episode, that uh, it's a sort of uh, international crime, uh, demolishing the houses and uh, the residences and the places and the native spots mm. of the civilians. And the international law is a crime. And in the international law as well, Palestine is, you know, uh, a land that is being uh, devastated by all those people yes. since the early beginning. Uh, today's uh, Anthony Blinken's uh, reference actually to the collaboration, the sense of solidarity among all the Arab people actually is always there. Yani, you know, I mean, we have had um, a negative steps right from the early start since a week ago, since the early initiation of that sort of inflow. You know, I mean, uh, you can really see the uh, uh, charitable, uh, uh, charitable episodes, mm. uh, fundraising episodes, uh, the Egyptian Red Crescent, actually, uh, calling for the humanitarian aid, actually, for almost all the people to be able to give and to transmit it, actually, to the civilians in there. And much the same way that uh, we can really witness, you know, I mean, uh, the blood donation, uh, you know, I mean, episodes, actually, in the streets. This is as far as the Egyptian side is being able actually to uh, collaborate and to give a helping hand actually 
on the Arab uh, level, actually. We can really find Jordan, uh, Syria, uh, Lebanon, uh, Algeria, uh, as much as Tunisia, yes. uh, Turkey as well. Um, a large number of people, even into the inside of Israel, uh, the right-handed uh, wings actually are very much calling for the, uh, you know, I mean, uh, finalizing the service of Benjamin Netanyahu and extraditing him actually from his own position. Uh, this is a clear indication to the withdrawal of the popularity of the Jewish existence actually in the Middle East, a sort of effect that should never ever be overlooked neither by the Jewish side nor even the American administration. We have had an almost every conceivable respect, mm. uh, helping hands, uh, pushing uh, negotiations and uh, negotiative route, actually, uh, towards um, the peaceful settlement, actually, of that sort of without interference. And much of the same way that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. President's uh, Al-Sisi's uh, confirmation of the fact that there wouldn't be any peace in the Middle East. Uh, had it not been for the fact that we should be able to return to the international law and two-state solution, the only final justification for the existence of two different peaceful, um, you know, I mean, entities within the territorial land of Palestine. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, the return again, and his own insistence to return to the uh, border lines of uh, the 4th of uh, June, uh, 1976, uh, and in the meantime, the re-establishing of the Palestinian state headed by a sort of a chosen and selected sort of leader, uh, as it was indeed during the case of the PLO, or the previous Yasser Arafat. That is the only way, actually, as much as uh, solving the problem of the refugees and their mm. own return again, the problem of voter, because, you know, I mean, this is an international crime, the sort of the devastation and the demolition and the stoppage of electricity, of the nets, of uh, the water, and uh, of almost all the serviceable ways of life, even to the extent of demolishing the ambulances and the uh, drivers of all these ambulances and uh, the doctors, the physicians, the surgeons, the babies, the youngsters, the newly born babes, and even those who hadn't been born yet. It's a sort of unbelievable sort of crime mm. that should never ever be justified not only from the American administration in the first instance, but the international community. Their own atrocities and their own crimes were being to be perpetuated in cold blood, in the daylight, not in the night, despite the fact that Gaza Strip now seems to be holy in night, mm. not in light, because of, mm. as I've just said, the stoppage of almost all ways and means of life in the a sort of an international crime that should be criminalized in the international uh, um, court. And I think that the perpetuating of that sort of crime in the meantime should never ever be justified and should be, uh, you know, I mean, directed to the uh, courts to be, uh, you know, I mean, judged in there for uh, the demolition of uh, the sort of the wasteland that I've just said at the very beginning, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, Doctor, on the other hand, uh, regarding the past two days, uh, we have had some incidents of uh, foreign citizens from the Gaza Strip trying to go into Egypt through the Rafah border crossing. Egypt declined such uh, a step, except for if the aid deliveries go to the other way from Egypt into Gaza. How do you see uh, these diplomatic steps made by Egypt in order to be de-escalating the situation and, of course, helping the humanitarian side of uh, the Gazans. Uh, we have had, uh, you know, the good intention actually of uh, transmitting medications and aids for them directly right from the early start, had it yes. not been for the fact that the other side that besieges and that confronts the Israeli uh, Rafah, actually, uh, we have had all uh, the peaceful ways and means of helping those people. But we do have our own simple right, actually, to safeguard and to protect our own border lines in the meantime, our own national security, actually. As I've just said, that Igora Island project is always there, had been initiated by that sort of man, reiteratively repeated every now and again, and they would find it at the time being as a sort of chance yes. to penetrate and to try to delocate and to relocate and to displace all those citizens, actually, peaceful ones indeed, just by, uh, you know, publicizing for the international community that mm. is the only uh, sanction and the only refuge, taken refuge into the other side of Sinai. And once they get in, actually, that will be the finalization of the whole situation. We wouldn't never ever hear of the Palestinian cause or case again. 
because they would demolish the infrastructure, they would try to rechange the map of the road, and they would put an end for almost any single individual sort of life in that, yes. no matter that sort of life is, or maybe. And as such, we as Egyptian presidency, we as uh, presidential authority, as a political authority actually, we don't have every simple right to yes. protect our own safeguards, to help other people actually in their own distresses, yes. and to try actually to put, uh, you know, I mean, a helping hand for them actually in their own moments of distress without any sort of demolishing our own national security nor even our own mm -hmm. safeguarding of our own uh, Egyptian land. Yes, uh, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Halim, the political analyst, thank you very much for being with us uh, tonight on the Daily Debate. My pleasure, sir. Anytime. And this uh, brings us to the end of uh, the Daily Debate uh, for tonight. Thank you for watching and goodbye.